How does the all-electric Jaguar I-Pace deal with snow? We find out on this episode of Driving Sports TV. How often do new EV reviews start with, you're looking at the future? Well, get ready for another one, because this is the Jaguar I-Pace EV400. And it not only feels like the future, it looks like it too. This is the HSC model, which is very well equipped. It comes with a pair of electric motors, one in the front and another in the back. Together, they produce up to 394 horsepower and 512 pound-feet of torque. They also work together to provide the I-Pace with all-electric, all-wheel drive. So you can do stuff like this and this. But we'll come back to that in a bit. This HSE comes with 20-inch wheels wrapped in all-season radials, LED headlights with auto bright feature, cool door pulls, and a lot of functional aero pieces. Price starts at just under 70 grand. However, as you see it here with a number of extras, it's 89,310, including destination. Up front is a small compartment that includes a level one 110 volt and a level two 220 volt combo charging cable for use at home. This here is a prototype adapter, so the final production one may look a bit different. Since the iPACE uses a standard SAE plug, it's compatible with ChargePoint and other standard public charging stations. Jaguar estimates the iPACE will take up to 13 hours to charge its 90 kilowatt hour battery at home if you have a high voltage AC circuit available. No high voltage? Expect it to take up to a full day or longer. If you're lucky enough to have access to a 100 kilowatt commercial charging station, you can charge up to 80% in as little as 40 minutes. With a full charge, the estimated range is 234 miles. However, that can vary dramatically based on environment, use, and accessories. Our test vehicle also came with the optional Activity Key System. This allows you to use a dedicated wristband to access the vehicle. It's great for parking and going for a hike without having to take a key fob with you in your pocket, though it can be a bit fussy to find just the right spot to activate it. But it is a good idea. I would prefer to just use my Apple Watch, all things considered, but that's unfortunately not an option. The rear hatch can open with a wave of a foot. The sensor is way in the corner, which is a bit odd. Uh, most vehicles put it dead center or you can optionally hit a traditional button. When open, the trunk looks very much like a standard Jaguar. The floor removes to access tools to help with a flat. And with the second row up, it has 25.3 cubic feet of storage available. Fold the second row completely flat for a total of 51.95 cubic feet. The second row is large enough to fit a full-size adult with ease. Also, look up, check out that glass roof. It's spectacular. This test car came with a four zone climate control, so the second row had individual controls, plus heated seats and power for devices. The door also has a trick sensor to notify second row occupants of oncoming traffic before opening the door, which is really great in busy city streets. Up front, the driver is wrapped in premium metal and leather appointments. The powered seats are deep and supportive, but for my six foot one inch frame, the headrest was simply too low. It poked me right back here. If you're shopping for an iPACE, definitely try the seats in person before committing. They are, however, cooled and heated with a simple spin of a dial. If you do make a habit of stopping for coffee in the morning, at first, it may look like there's not a place to put your cup but it's actually hiding under a removable panel just to the right. Infotainment relies on a dual screen system that is common in other Jaguar and Land Rover vehicles. It's called Touch Pro Duo with a 10 inch display on top and a 5.5 inch touchscreen right below it. Like in those other vehicle applications, it looks great, but it's painfully slow which is very disappointing given that this is a vehicle that appeals to more technology-driven owners. You'd think they could bump up the processor or RAM to make things happen faster. But no, you, you'll just suffer through it. The backup camera and surround view systems do seem like they take a lifetime to engage when the vehicle is switched into reverse. CarPlay and Android Auto are supported through USB. 
Sound pumps through 15 Meridian speakers. And honestly, yeah, they sound great. The gauge cluster is a 12.3 inch screen with multiple configurations and gauges available. Like the infotainment system, this too is slow to respond to commands. It's pretty, but otherwise a miserable user experience. In this screen, the driver can configure all the advanced safety features like lane keep assist, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alerts, traffic sign recognition, emergency collision notification, and driver assist functions. At standard ride height, the I-PACE resembles a large hatchback. But with a push of a button, the suspension raises up about two inches, giving it a proper off-roading stance. Note that if speeds do approach 50 miles per hour, the I-PACE hunkers back down to improve aerodynamics. Sorry to dash any dreams of off-road high-speed rally runs, you'll have to look at a different vehicle. Drive controls are straightforward using standard PRND buttons. They're placed vertically along the center console. Various driving modes can be selected on the parallel buttress. Like most modern cars, you can select Eco, Normal, and Sport Dynamic modes to tune the characteristics to your liking. Similar to Nissan's E-Pedal, the I-PACE can engage heavy regen braking when your foot is removed from the gas pedal. If you do prefer to have the I-PACE creep like a standard automatic transmission gas burner, you can change the setting in the software. Be aware that range in stop-and-go situations will suffer since it can't collect a lot of that energy back. Whichever braking system you do select, it does stick to the key fob, so you can set it and forget it. Today is an interesting day to be testing the driving characteristics of an electric sport crossover. We just had record snowfall and cold temperatures in the Seattle area. Jaguar claims that the I-PACE can actually handle temperatures as low as negative 40 degrees Celsius. That's really cold. Granted, it will deplete some of the batteries much quicker, but at least it'll still work. Dual motor, all electric, all wheel drive is interesting. Lacking a drive shaft down the center, the I-PACE uses nothing more than software to connect the front and rear wheels and keep them working together. In conditions like this, I was kind of concerned that the I-PACE would be overwhelmed just trying to maintain composure. Yes! What? What? <laughs> Give it a little speed, you get full-on controllable rotation. Just don't be shy with the throttle. Turns out, my concern was misplaced. In fact, the I-PACE was a lot of fun in the ice and snow. Okay, now we're going to try a donut. Can it donut? There we go. And what? Ah! Okay, we can get this. Got to go in a little bit further. Mosh the throttle. Can it donut? Ah, oh, world's slowest. Whoa, grip donut. Come on, you got this. I have to say, doing donuts in my ancient Subaru Legacy rally car is way easier. Hey, there we go. I think we got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. On a dime. Granted, it was possibly one of the world's slowest donuts, but you have to appreciate that it managed to pivot around the inside wheel. You can still see the stability control system trying its best to keep the I-PACE in check while at the same time accommodating my steering inputs. Let's see just how well this system handles slippery starts. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the car in all default mode, and I'm just gonna mosh the throttle. Three, two, one, and go. Oh, lots of power cut. Okay. With full throttle applied, first the I-PACE tests the surfaces with a quick burst of torque. That's quickly smacked down by the traction control system. Once that takes over, the I-PACE finds grip and darts forward. In dry conditions, Jaguar claims the I-PACE can do 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Today, yeah, it's a bit slower. 
Traction control is on. Complete stop. Three, two, one, and go. Oh, cut power, cut power. And... <laughs> okay, we're just gonna go to 40. Okay, that was, um, that was sketch. <laughs> Because of the conditions, the various drive modes really didn't have any effect on launch performance on ice. Actual snow tires would have been a lot more helpful. Driving the iPACE was incredible. It was a lot of fun. And very easy to forget that this is a zero emissions electric vehicle. It's fast, handles great, and has enough range to really remove any anxiety in normal day-to-day -day use. I'm kind of hoping that Jaguar can issue an over-the-air software update to address the infotainment system's sluggishness. But given that this is the same system that is also ridiculously slow in other Jaguar and Land Rover vehicles, I really wouldn't count on it. But shockingly enough, that is still not enough to crush my enthusiasm about the iPACE. I loved it. And honestly, yeah, I wouldn't mind having one of my own. True. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. How do you feel about sluggish infotainment systems? Is that a deal breaker for you? Post a comment below. Also, please like, comment, and subscribe. We do these videos for you, and we hope you come back for more. We'll see you next time.